In the last couple of slide presentations, I've talked about electrophysiology from a cellular perspective and electrophysiology from a more global perspective in, in terms of the electrocardiogram. And um, in this uh, set of slides on page uh, 25 of your uh, cardiac dysrhythmia interpretation workbook, um, I want to look at um, both electrophysiology at a cellular and a global level and uh, compare the two. So in other words, what we're going to compare is the action potential, which is what happens at a cellular level versus the electrocardiogram at the global level. So let's first look at what an action potential is. So an action potential is uh, a representation of the electrical activity of a single cell. And so what they do is they put a probe inside the cell and one outside the cell, and they measure the negativity inside the cell. And it's typically at negative 85. So um, at negative 85, this would be a resting cell. And this straight line here would be the polarized state or the isoelectric line. And the polarized state is phase four in the action potential. Then what happens is when a wave of electrical depolarization um, hits the cell, so this resting muscle cell, it rapidly undergoes uh, depolarization, and this is phase zero. So this is phase zero depolarization. And then it reaches um, a number above in the positive mark, so just above zero. And then uh, it takes a little, bit, a little bit of a dip, and this is phase one. This is referred to as early repolarization. And in phase one, um, uh, well, I'll talk about the electrolyte change in just a second. And then there's phase two, which is a plateau phase. And then um, phase three, which is the repolarization. And then we're back to phase four, the polarized state. So uh, perhaps it's best to explain this on the next slide when we compare the action potential to the electrocardiogram. So in phase four, the polarized state, you'll recall that we have uh, a cell where the number of neg negative charges on the inside is equal to the number of positive charges on the outside. And then the cell becomes rapidly depolarized and that happens because the fast sodium channels open and there's a very rapid uh, influx of sodium into the cell at phase zero. And there's also an influx of calcium uh, into the cell as well. And when calcium enters the cell, it stimulates the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release additional calcium. Then when we get to the top of depolarization, there's a little bit of a dip, and this is uh, phase one. And uh, phase one early repolarization, uh, what happens here is the fast sodium channel closes. There's a continuous influx of calcium. There may be an efflux of potassium that causes the dip. There may, so, may also be a movement of chloride, which is a negatively charged ion, into the cell, which also uh, contributes to that little dip in the early repolarization of phase one. Um, and then we have phase two, which is a plateau phase. And during this phase, there is also a continuous influx of um, calcium into the cell. So what's happening then compared to the ECG, and I've stretched this out. So an ST segment wouldn't normally be this long, but for the sake of comparing it to the action potential, what's happening here in the plateau phase is that calcium is continually in, uh, coming into the cell and the cells are in a state of contraction. So the, the uh, ventricles are contracting and holding that contraction until all of the blood is squeezed out of the heart. Um, and then uh, the heart undergoes repolarization, which is phase three. And the repolarization phase occurs in two stages. The first stage, there's an efflux of potassium out of the cell. And the second stage, the sodium potassium pump kicks in and uh, potassium is pumped back into the cell while sodium and calcium are pumped back out of the cell. So phase four is the uh, polarized phase. Phase zero is depolarization. Phase one is early repolarization. Phase two, plateau. Phase three, repolarization. Now, if we look at uh, the action potential of a pacemaker cell, which is um, demonstrated by this dotted line here, what happens is phase four is not a flat line. It's, it's in a constant state of flux. So there's constant movement of electrolytes across the cell membrane. And when they move upwards, they reach a threshold, and that's about negative 60. And at negative 60, the cell undergoes rapid depolarization. So that's the th threshold. And we're going to talk some more about that threshold, threshold level in the next presentation. 